Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Falling Wisdom, Lectures of Fallen Wisdom, that is. I haven't been on here for a very long time because I've been struggling with a couple personal demons of myself. And uh, one of them I wanted to talk to about because I think a lot of people have this demon inside them. And it's a demon who accepts the defeatist uh, point of view. It's the demon who thinks life is inherently hard. It's the demon who, like, shuns greatness out of pride because they don't want to, like, they, they feel bad if they outshine the people around them. So they'll just stay in their little corner and be quiet. Like, that's a demon. And also the demon of just, like, being a loser, like, allowing yourself to be one by not being productive, by not trying to do the things that if you were if you wanted to admire yourself you you would do like you admire people who do certain things like you admire musicians you admire writers you read writers you watch movies you admire all these people what they're doing they bring richness to your life so you should be trying to do those things too whatever you whatever you most get into is what you should be uh trying to do and you should be really trying hard and not just doing a bunch of uh, drugs to try to do it. I mean, if if they help, if they enhance, that's fine. But for the most part, you make your best art when you're not high, when you're in the most mundane, hating it existence, zero spirituality going on. That's how you create spirituality, through writing, through art, you let yourself, and the, and the reason why the West is the greatest art is because we've allowed ourselves to go deep down into the uh, the pit of despair. We actually built up a god, and then murdered him. And uh, it's it's tremendously it's been a tremendous uh, weight on humanity to have to deal with the fact, or at least temporarily believe that there's nothing. But we needed to get there just to shed the, the mytho- mythological joke that came down. And we need to understand a lot of those metaphors are there for the soul. For like, for example, when you look in the Bible and you see like the, the depiction of the, the apocalypse and people are like, well, it, you know, it has a lot of resemblance to today. And that's only true because the apocalypse is inside of you somewhere. And so you're generating this field around you, and it's, it's changing the parallel universe. So the question of this podcast is how do you become the constructor of the world instead of the sufferer of the world? The constructor of the world is somebody who actually like can exert personal change on this world in a positive way. Okay. Nobody's a constructor that doesn't achieve some kind of positivity. So, you know, whatever you want to say about anybody, if they're not objectively creating positivity, if it's like, Oh, I meant to, this is too bad because you're no longer a constructor. Now, what does that mean? It just means that you're supposed to be bringing humanity forward. And if you try to bring it backwards, Obviously, you're a destructor, and that's just, let's just say it's bad for your health to be a disharmonious uh, destructor. Now, of course, some things to be constructed need, other things need deconstruction. There's certain, like, immoral states that probably could use some deconstruction. But we arrive, we can, like, uh, we don't have to fight evil, is my point. You ascend into a world where there is no evil if you are grateful for everything. But you have to really be grateful all the time. A lot of people, like, they, have, you know, they, they take a moment and they get grateful, but then they go right back into, like, oh, I don't have this and I don't have that. The more you can achieve perpetual gratefulness, the, you'll be invincible. 
you will be invincible. In fact, if you look back on every time that you've actually like hurt yourself, it's when you you were in a state of non gratefulness for sure. Now it's like, oh, it's, it's impossible to hurt yourself in a state of gratefulness. Um, uh, just look back on your life, man. I think there's some kind of energy you generate when you're grateful that is like a force field and brings you into the higher realm. Nothing else does. And you can't fake gratefulness. That's what's so sad about it. If you're not grateful, then, I mean, you have to figure out how to get grateful. Because you should, have, you should be grateful for just the ability to be grateful. Does that make sense? You should be grateful that you have the capacity to be grateful. Is that enough? Whatever it takes, man, because you'll never achieve any kind of happiness of that gratefulness perpetually underneath it. So remember in the past podcast, I talked about how the best way to keep an empty mind is to practice the question, the question meditation. What is my next thought? What is my next thought? And that, will always lead to an empty space and that empty space can be expanded upon. And ultimately you want to be walking around with your mind empty and your senses alive. The less, the fewer thoughts running through your head, the better. In fact, zero thoughts should be going through your head until you actually come to a problem and you need to solve it. Why have the calculator on in your bag getting hit all the buttons you pull up the calculator and it's like this big giant number that no one knows where it was derived from. That's essentially what happens to your thinking. It gets all jumbled up, added together in a very haphazard way and creates a lot of tension. And that tension then gets released, usually in a negative way. It usually causes a negative scarring on somebody else. And then that person transmits it to somebody else. So every time you do something negatively, like, Yes, you might get some results. It might actually help you. But ultimately, like you're doing, you're making it a negative world and negative worlds like are hard to be grateful about. Like if you do anything negative, then you know of a time that, you know of a time that um, somebody shouldn't, you know, maybe wouldn't be so grateful. Maybe you like foreclosed on somebody's house or maybe you did something like very unreasonable. I'm not necessarily saying that foreclosing on someone's house is always wrong, but if you have the capacity to give them a little more time, you certainly can do that. So it's just little things like that. Sometimes people are just like such letter of the law people that they, they're like, well, this is what the law says. So I'm going to put you in jail for 10 years. It's like you kind of have the power to strenuously object if you find yourself enforcing a bad law and you can generally get some, perhaps some help for this person who's going to suffer a long prison sentence for something that was just in the books. So, I mean, that's just an example of just like where people can adjust their attitude a little bit and make other people feel grateful. So those are the two activities that you need to try to make other people feel grateful, but don't, hunt for it like some hunt somebody hunting for um compliments just love people like when you see them even like your political enemy like do not hate hate is like the worst cancer producing emotion and it's instantly non-grateful right you can't hate somebody and be grateful at the same time you just can't so you have to be that's why um you know christ was always like love your enemies because you should be grateful for that. They're like your training partners. They're here like, they're just like in the dojo and they play like the the, the dark evil ninja against your like superhero right, you know, right dealing one. And uh, you're in there and you're in the studio and look, man, if you're, if you're pure, if you're, um, if you're grateful all at all times, you can, you can bring down Goliath. It's, there's, no, there's nobody that's stronger than you. Gratefulness is the, is, is the power. Now, of course, it's hard to be grateful if you're not taking in enough oxygen. It's hard to be grateful sometimes without the assistance of certain, certain drugs. 
Now, as long as you're not relying upon them and you can figure out a mode to becoming grateful without them, then I would say that you're not needing them to feel grateful. If you need drugs to feel grateful, then you should quit for a long time and try to learn how to feel grateful without because they're not the only route and they will eventually have a diminishing return and ultimately you will be, you'll lose your inability to, to have gratefulness outside of a drug experience, which is a lot of people actually having that problem today because what they've done is they've just gone to the well too many times. So you want to be very careful when using drugs to go to become grateful, but that is one way of doing it. Alcohol obviously makes everybody feel grateful when they drink it. Kind of the purpose of it. So let it be that. You know, these cigarette warnings, they kind of hurt that gratefulness factor of cigarettes. And, like, I think they actually inject uh, more thoughts of cancer, more, like, self-somatic cancer, if that makes if that's even a word. But the point being that, yes, we should warn people about these things, but at the same time, are the warnings creating a reality in the minds of a lot of people, whereas before they were just enjoying the cigarette? Like, is there some kind of factor there with regard to the health? I mean, we're learning more and more things, and I think it's safe to say that there's probably some influence there. But in any case, so gratefulness, looking, trying to find the good in everybody that you see, do not judge people harshly, okay? If they are evil, it's not conscious. It's just somebody who's asleep. They just woke up. And all they're doing is waking up a little during the day and they're waking up cranky. That's what an evil person is. It's somebody who just sleeps a lot, sleeps through life. Every once in a while they get shocked awake and they express some rage. Okay? You have to have extreme compassion for people like this. They're tremendously ill. And just like somebody who's, you know, that, that's the problem with, like, unpleasantness. People treat it like a behavior when really it's an illness. And there's there's everything you can do to be a – how can I put this? Uh, anything you can do to be grateful is contributing to a general sense. See, like I'm, right now I'm trying – I've been trying to avoid these kids this whole time I'm walking in the park. And I finally ran into a whole pile of them, and they had me cornered. I was like, I can't get away from them now. Now, I used to get mad at little things like that, but now it's just, it was just fun. It was just a funny thing that I <laughs> – so you find the humor in things. That's a good way to be grateful. Um, yeah, and you should definitely try to just – don't you don't need to watch, like, drama a lot. You should try, watch more comedy just because comedy is just, like – Laughing, you'll feel grateful when you're laughing, no matter what happens. Like, you could be inside a fucking jail cell and laugh, and in that moment, you feel grateful. Now, I'm going to walk through, and there's a guy playing a horn in this uh, in this little hole here in the park. So, excuse me while I just uh, walk through. I don't know if you can hear me, but I don't want to say anything too important while the guy's playing Oh, playing under this. Anyway, so he's playing under this um, little thing. So what are you going to do, man? Like, are you going to go out there and do something great? Okay, because that's what the key to life is. It's, it's breathing. It's keeping your mind clear. It's doing right by other people. And it's being grateful. All those things... You just rotate amongst them, okay? Gratefulness, breathing. Oh, yeah, and think about your best. Have your mind resting on your best thought. Now I'm walking with the kids under a tunnel. I cannot escape these children. Anyway, one day I'll tell you everybody about the child empire, which I believe we are into now. And um, it's something that I had prophesied in the 90s. I didn't really know what form it would take. But we are seeing it now. We have a child emperor. Um, we have a lone king. Um, I'm 
I'm wondering who the Badoff King is, but uh, I'll let you guys, you know, figure out who that might be. And, um, you know, the, the, the Lone King, I also, like, am known as the Lone King. I'm also known as Lone Hawk, Logan. I have many names, but those are just different aspects of the one person who I am, named One Nation. So let's just, uh, we're going to start going by that name because I have to bring all of these disparate parts into unison. So that's what you do. You know, you, another fun game you can play and it's, it can, is just to separate yourself out into your different parts and then integrate. So you can, you know, play different parts for a long time, but then you eventually have to integrate them into one name. And you can name that name. So mine is One Nation. It's like each certain person is like a country. But all these things are little mind tricks you can do, and they are very important to just – it's very important to keep your mind occupied, and that's why entertainment helps. But you, know, you also have to – you know, you have to have to pay the bills sometime. And rather than sitting at a slave-type job, you have the power to just make something great. If you just sat down and tried to write a poem a day, like seriously, like a red, roses are red, violets are blue type poem. I think that rhymes, okay? Just write a poem a day, like not even a, like four lines, okay? So two fucking bars. I mean, two bars each, so four bars. Write a poem. Or just make a, draw a picture. Draw a picture that's 12 by 12 using a, a pencil just anything of art, okay? Just get on it, okay? Don't fuck around anymore. Like, enough TV watching. Like, if you're going to TV watch, you got to do some art at the same time. You must be producing. And one of the reasons why we were made physical by God was to get down here and work with the clay, with the earth. And if we just sit around in our heads and wait for the afterlife, they're going to be like, what the fuck? We sent you down there at great expense to work with... The, the, the wood to work with the we can't we're spirits and you come down here and you don't do shit you just watch tv no so it's important man you got to get your whatever art you're doing get it together do it well and be grateful breathe i'm tying all the threads together in this one and try to make others grateful and one of the best ways to do that is through art because if you, like, can provide, like, an awesome concert experience to, like, a huge crowd of people, do you know how much power you get from that? If you can, like, inspire people with a piece of art, do you know how much power you get from that? You get, like, some serious power, okay? Because you're putting out effort. You're trying. They want to see that. You can't just be a virtuous person. That's not enough. You can't just be a good person. You have to be an ambitious person who wants to be seen wants people to recognize him as a as as a as a legendary great person like people are like oh well that's that's pride and it's just like you know what it's pride to not want that it's pride to not want the spotlight yes because you're trying to be prideful in the sense that a christian is like but keep your head down and like don't you know the meek shall inherit the earth you're reenacting that idea. Consider yourself pr proud and meek. And so you can't be famous. You can't be well-known. You can't excel. Watch out for that demon. Anyway, this has been Lectures of Fallen Wisdom. I'll be back with more. Thanks for being patient.